today is the day I'm officially moving into my temporary new shop on the compound. I've been whipping around the new Celsius. If you guys haven't seen this already on Adam's channel, this is our new daily. It's basically an LS 400 imported from Japan and it's called a Celsius. We just call it Celsius. That's what it reminds me of. It came with these really cool like, little lace bibs. I love it. I love it so much. It's been nice to drive a car that just works. Feels like a boat on the road. It's really quiet inside. It doesn't have like US radio frequencies. So it's kind of just been really nice, quiet drives right now until we get some sort of music situation working in here. Well, I went to the old warehouse threw some stuff in the car. I'm also moving stuff from the main shop on the compound to start moving into my little temporary shop right here. But before I move anything in, I need to deep clean this shop. Once the place is cleaned up, I'm gonna move my cars over here, my goat cart that I haven't even showed you guys. That's the first ever goat cart I ever had. But first we clean. Just from opening the door again, all of this dirt Ugh, all this dirt got in here. I already mopped this entire place once, so it does look a lot better. It's a lot cleaner, but I think it needs one more once over for mopping. No, oh, no, 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 go outside. I don't want you to be trapped in here. Look at him. Oh, he's so cute, you guys. But I don't want him to get trapped in my shop, so. I honestly haven't messed with the office that much because the electricity doesn't work. I'm gonna hold off on really trying to clean and set this room up until lights are working. One update about the place. When I was here late cleaning it the first time, I was running the water in the bathroom, like just letting the shower like rinse itself. And the ceiling started leaking. Okay. We have a really big problem bro you're kidding me right all i did was run the water in the bathroom <gasps> ew see right here though it's solid where it's leaking just gonna put this here for now where is it at Uh, I guess this is all just what comes with getting the new property and one that literally hasn't had anyone in it in like five years. This is supposed to be the nice shop that didn't need any work. Man. There's something weird with the water here. I don't plan to take showers here anyway. It's fine if you're just washing your hands, but if you leave the shower running like I did, that's when we got that problem. So. Again, I'm just working out here temporarily. We'll look into that down the road, but definitely not a priority. I would say the priority for this shop would definitely first be getting the AC working because the AC currently does not work. It's just stuck at 80. It doesn't feel like 80 in here. It feels like 75 right now. The wiring for the AC is part of the big problem why it's not working. I guess the guys did an inspection on it and it's just, a mess. So that'll hopefully be getting looked at maybe end of next week. But for now, there's fans and I think I'll be fine. Honestly, in California, I didn't have AC in my shop at all and worked like that for years. So I'm just gonna have to get used to it for a little bit. I'm gonna start cleaning this place up. <laughs> Shop is mopped. 
It already looks so much better and clean, so I'm going to let it dry and then slowly start bringing all of my things in here. So I'm actually really curious to see how much space just my existing stuff that I have here takes up because I have way more stuff in California and you guys will understand now why I chose the other shop because it's a lot bigger and once I bring my stuff from California in, way more likely to fit the one next door because there's a lot more floor space. But yeah, step one, cleaning complete. I already wiped down all the counters, so yeah, I'm good to start moving in. I honestly don't have too much stuff that I brought over from the other warehouse because a lot of it is in the main shop here, but I'm just gonna unload the Celsius. And then last, I'll bring over my go-kart that I still haven't showed you guys yet and my motorbike. got me this pink toolbox forever ago for my birthday. They're in Daytona Beach, so they dropped it off when they dropped it off my goat cart. And it still has stuff from so long ago in it. Oh, I haven't been through this thing in forever, but got a cute pink toolbox in here. Basically all the stuff that is mine that I'm gonna have in here for now is loaded in. Now we get to move the cars in. <laughs> latest addition to the compound. This is my first ever dope cart. This is what got me into racing over a decade ago. My parents have always kept it here in Florida. This is my first ever helmet. Just a lot of throwback vibes here. This is what started it all, you guys. This is why I am where I am today. I fell in love with motorsport, fell in love with racing because of this beautiful unit right here. This is a Briggs and Stratton four stroke engine. I raced in this car in the World Formula class, started racing it when I was in Colorado. I won my first races ever in this car. This is the first number I ever had, 77, that I still rock for the most part to this day. I actually got this cart as a hand-me-down and it was already the number 77. So I've just kept with that number throughout most of my career. And if 77 isn't available, I usually try and get a seven or 07. I was 07 in Rally Cross because 77 was already taken, but this is it, you guys. She still runs to this day. My dad's done a really good job keeping up with her. I have a spare engine over here in this box. I'm actually not sure why we changed it. So I'm gonna have to think back to a long time ago and figure out if this is still good or kind of why we have a backup. Ah, oh, it's so wild to me that I have my cart here. This is what started absolutely everything. Oh, it's kind of sad, but also kind of convenient. I still fit in this seat, you guys. Let's see. Wait, gotta, gotta move some of the padding. Go-kart seats are supposed to hold you in really, really tight so you don't like fly around everywhere. The racing go-karts, really your seat is supposed to be set up exactly for you. 
and my seat still fits me a decade later. I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing, but this is so cool, really nostalgic. I'm stoked to have this in my shop. Adam has his fleet of go-karts around here now and we can rip them around the compound. So I'm really excited to take this thing back out. Like I keep saying, this is what started absolutely everything for me. It was just me and my dad. We got a hand-me-down goat cart. I got a hand-me-down race suit and we just showed up at the track and had to figure it out. At the very, very beginning, we had like a couple people that would give us advice here and there. We'd be showing up to the goat cart track with this cart in the back of his truck. We use like those plastic saw horses. There'd be all these other kids there showing up with semis, with spare chassis, spare engines. It was a gnarly first experience and welcome to the motorsport world when I did my first year of competition in this cart. And in the beginning, some people were helping us out. And then throughout my first season, we started getting more and more competitive once I got the hang of things. Just being thrown into this world, we started to be competitive and I started winning races and that's when just no one else would help us out anymore. More. I also got like pushed off track for the very first time in this thing. Kart racing is what taught me how to like stand my own ground because it was a lot to get thrown into. It was just me and my dad. And when I started being competitive, people were like getting mad. And I had this guy like trying to run me off the kart track in the part of the track where you couldn't see as a spectator. So I had to learn very early on and very fast that you need to put your elbows up. You need to stand your ground. It's really cool to have this kart here. I'm glad we never sold it. Thank you to my parents for keeping it for all these years. This is some of my first ever like battle scars right here. Right there, got some tire marks, but man, I'm excited to get this thing running at 100% again and take her out for some laps of the compound. I did about a year, a little over a year of go-kart racing before I started transitioning into cars because it was just too expensive for us to keep up with at the higher levels. And at least with cars, with the bigger events, there's more spectators. It was something that I would be able to go out and start building sponsorships and partnerships for because there was actual value there that was a lot greater than go-kart races and most go-kart events. It was my first step and experience into motorsport. I knew I loved it. It was something I wanted to do for the rest of my life. But for me, if I wanted to race, I had to fundraise the money. I had to go out there and get sponsorships. Every weekend, I was at the track networking, walking, introducing myself, um, cold calling like every company around because I thought that's how sponsorships worked back in the day. I was like building my own websites, proposals, and I just had to throw myself fully into it. And eventually when I moved down to Florida, I put together a program with my university and my college was my very first like major sponsor. And we put together a program for the mechanical engineering students to bring them to the racetrack to get hands-on experience, which is very limited when you're in a college environment. You know, it's very textbook based. And I put together a proposal that was like, look, I'm gonna give your engineering students real hands-on experience that is valuable and I can make this happen if you sponsor me for my first years of car racing. So there's a lot more to that story and kind of how I got started in racing, but that's just a little bit of my background and that is what started everything. I will be working on it on the channel coming up here because I did do some laps around the compounds and it feels like the clutch is going bad. It's like disengaging and then re-engaging. So I'm gonna have to check that out. But other than that, I mean, she is solid. Gotta do a little bit of maintenance on her, but there you go. Now you guys have seen my first ever dope tart. So here is the shop so far. The Z is gonna live over there for a while. I do have some things coming up I'm gonna be doing to that car, but for now, she's gonna chill right there. Corvette, lots of stuff coming up very soon for this. So I'm gonna just keep this car in the lift spot. 
I'm gonna have my goat car on a stand, probably like right in here. And the last thing I need to go get is my bike. And that'll be mostly what I need to move in for today. Oh yeah, we have a goat car track now. And goat car. This is why I still haven't moved into my shop yet because there's too many fun things to do here at the compound. Look at this. I'm in here trying to work and move stuff and look at this. Oh my God. Already having wrecks with the dough car. I need to stay focused. I'll have fun later. I need to stay focused. This is so hard. And this is exactly why I am so stoked to get my dough car up and running and just laughing it every day. This is gonna be so awesome. Honestly, I'll probably end up just driving the fleet carts a lot more. We have six of them total. These two are temporarily down, still getting fixed, but four of them are running. Here is the shop, day one. We got the Barbie Z in a little spot back here. Definitely gonna put my House of Pre banner up right there tomorrow. Got the Corvette, my goat cart, and the motorbike. I am so excited for this little bike, you guys. Like, I've been doing tons of research nonstop. Got a lot of plans coming up to maybe restore this one, maybe take a different direction. Probably gonna be in the next video, but I've been so stoked on this thing. And from the comments, it looked like you guys were as well. So I'm excited to start digging more into kit bikes. And yeah, here's my first round of stuff in the shop. I got a lot of parts to sort through. I'm excited to start working in this place while my actual shop next door starts getting renovated. And huge thank you to you guys that have been sending me ideas from the first video that I posted about that shop and kind of the vibes I was going for. You guys sent over a lot of really cool stuff. I've already reached out to some of the lighting companies that you guys recommended, so right now the ideas that are coming together for that place are pretty sick. The lighting is going to be wild. I'm still trying to figure out what I want to do with paint, but I'm really excited to start that project. That is it. I am officially moved into my little space at the compound and I'm excited to get to work here. I will see you guys in the next one.